Hello and welcome to another Small Gold live stream. It is Saturday, the 8th of June, 2019. Welcome, Small Gold mug stackers and game changers. It is Saturday Night Silver with Small Gold. And tonight we're going to take a look at the price of silver in foreign currencies in the last couple of years and also the last 10 years. And also we're going to take a look at the commitment of traders and the COMEX silver warehouses as well as silver inflows and outflows in ETFs and other depository situations. All right, well, let's take a look now. The, the first chart we're looking at is the price of silver over the last 10 years in U.S. dollars. And you can see we had that near $50 price in 2011. It's been pretty much downhill ever since other than a couple of stair steps on the way down you had that big crash in 2011 and uh, really dropped and then it looked like it rebounded back up to 43 dollars and i thought to myself oh well maybe that'll just be the new base and then it fell off the table there and then we started getting predictions in 2012 and 13 and 14 the bottom is in the bottom is in <coughs> in the 40 35 30 25 20 dollar range and then you can see it slipped through the 20 dollar mark somewhere in 2014 it had been playing around 20 dollars all through 2013 and 14 and then it fell in the middle of 2014 all the way down to 15 dollars and we opened 2015 in the teens and it actually broke 15 in early 2016. Now, 2016 had a very nice run-up in U.S. dollars. Uh, that was the year of Brexit. And you can see all year in 2016 till about, that was about July or so, the price was on a steady rise. It rose from about 1381 I think, to over almost $22. It was a very nice rise. And then it kind of fell off the table again and continued a slow descent in really haven't had much momentum since then a couple of bounces in 2017 but never breaking 20 again and then finally breaking 15 at the end of 2018 and also as part part of this year uh, we've broke 15 and currently we're at 1491 now well, that's news to you uh, if you follow uh, silver if you follow small gold we know where the price of silver has been now we've been hearing although about gold that it's really that just the dollar is strong and that the gold is actually doing quite well especially versus other currencies and that is true uh, gold has hit all-time highs in the Australian dollar Argentine peso it's close to all-time highs in Canadian dollars now it's way off the all-time high in US dollars because the price of gold right now I believe it's about thirteen hundred and forty dollars the all-time high in gold was nineteen hundred and eleven in US dollars and silver's all-time high is about $50 in U.S. dollars in 2011 at the same time. Now, one thing that's happened since 2011 is the dollar has strengthened. Well, why is that? Because, well, even though the U.S., uh, the Fed did QE3 in 2013, they're very clever. They're always talking about ending it and tapering it and then raising interest rates. And the dollar's been on a relative tear since... Uh, even the beginning of 2013, the dollar index getting close to 100, over 100 in the last few years. It's hovering right now, I believe, at, uh, what is it at? Yeah, it's at 96.59. So the dollar strength is what harms gold and silver prices. But of course, gold and silver prices can do well versus other currencies. All right, so that is the U.S. dollar situation. But... Unfortunately for silver, silver is doing poorly even against some currencies that you don't wouldn't consider to be uh, strong currencies. Uh, let's take a look at a longer term. This is the same chart, only not with the pretty small gold writing on it. Same source, Nick Laird produces this gold charts for us. This chart goes back a little further than the one he produced for me. Mine goes back, well, no, it's about the same thing. It goes back to 2009. But you see the same thing. But his other chart from Gold Charts R Us goes back. This one goes back to the 70s to 1970. And there you can see your Twin Peaks. You can see gold spike in 1980. Gold spike in 2010-11. And this is why I like to call silver the spike and dive 
uh, metal. You can see in, in 1980, pretty much went up and then straight down. Now, totally different circumstances, but maybe not. Uh, Comex was responsible for that crash in 1980. They essentially shut the Hunt brothers down. They, when the price was getting out of control and the Hunt brothers had some margin out, they thought the best thing they can do to end this was to uh, make only sell orders possible on Comex. Well, when that happens, guess what happens? The price goes down and down it went. I mean, it went from about uh, $15, $16. It had risen really rapidly during 1969 from the single digits all the way up to almost $20. And then it just went on a straight tear in early 1980, all the way up to 50 And you could see it, it's hard to tell on the chart. Uh, it just came straight, straight back down, and it did exactly what it did in 2011. It looks like, oh, yeah, maybe it shouldn't be $50, but $25 is reasonable, don't you think? rose back to 25 and then just cratered and made a little bit of bouncing. And you can see it was in the wilderness for the longest period of time. And then starting in 2008, for the far right, you can see it starts moving higher. And then it takes a big sprint, a big spike towards the end of 2010, right into 2011, and it immediately comes down. Now, Comex, some say it was Comex trading that definitely knocked it back. But also Comex trading is what brought it higher. Um, but there was an event uh, sometime in April. It just went from like $50 to $43 in a matter of seconds. And pretty much it's been downhill ever since then. Now, remember, currencies also trade versus the dollar. And weaker currencies are going to lead to better silver prices. So let's take a look at the price of silver in Argentine pesos. Now, because the Argentine peso becomes more worthless by the day, by the hour, by the day, by the week, by the month, by the year, you could see that little 2011 blip. That was a big deal in Argentina. Price of silver went to 200 pesos in at the peak in April 2011. Well, currently it costs you about 668 pesos for an ounce of silver. So clearly, even though in the United States you've seen uh, the price of silver fall versus the dollar, it's done nothing but rise against the Argentine peso. So you can see it's basically gone up, especially since 2016. You can see that it's gone up. And if you look at the U.S. charts in 2016, price of silver has gone down. Remember, all this stuff is relative. Um, so Argentine peso, you put anything against the Argentine peso, you put chairs or mattresses or spoons, they're going to be rising versus the Argentine peso. But now... If you look at the Australian dollar, not a pretty sight given that given that gold is at all-time highs versus the Australian dollar today. We're gonna tomorrow we're gonna take a look at gold versus foreign currencies. Now, while it's higher in dollar prices uh, than the U.S. dollar, which just means that the Australian dollar is um, less valuable, it's cheaper than the dollar. It is at uh, 21 and a quarter right now, whereas in the U.S. it's under $15. But the Australian dollar was stronger back in 2011, and when it hit its high, its high was only about $45. So the Australian dollar uh, was stronger back in 2011. That's why you didn't get the $50 price. But now that the Australian dollar is weaker than the U.S. dollar, you're seeing a $21, $22 silver price but it's still far below its all-time high so so far only argentina has managed to admit certainly if you had silver in argentina you're better off in australia not so much now in brazil similar situation but still not at an all-time high now brazilian real is a horrible currency don't think that well silver's kind of held up pretty well since 2011 versus the real no, it hasn't. It hasn't even hit its all-time high again versus the real. And the real has been declining. So in a sense, the real and the silver have been declining. And silver has declined more since 2011. It's not near its peak. The peak in 2011 was about uh, 76, 77 Brazilian real. And right now it's about 57. So in Brazil, if you held silver in 2011 and you've continued to hold it, 
you'd be down not only in dollar terms, you'd be down in actual Brazilian reals, which is uh, not what you would think would happen with a country with a pretty weak currency like the Brazilian real. British pounds, despite the Brexit and all the issues that we've had with the British pound currency since 2016, since Brexit, silver yet has declined against the pound, meaning even though the pound has been declining versus the dollar since 2016, pound used to trade consistently at $1.50. It's now been trading consistently around a dollar and a quarter. It's showing a very similar decline in price versus the British pound. Silver hit a peak at about 29 pounds per ounce back in 2011. But this chart looks similar to the U.S. chart. It does have that little rise up towards Brexit. Uh, it had been trading around nine ten dollars, nine ten pounds per ounce in 2016. The beginning went all the way up to 16, and then you can see even though since 2016 the pound has fallen versus the dollar, silver has fallen more versus the dollar and the British pound. As you can see, silver trading at 1170. And tomorrow we're going to do gold. Just keep that in mind. All right, Canadian dollar now. Gold versus the Canadian dollar is close to an all-time high. And this chart only goes to 2014, I believe. But you can see silver trading at uh, under $20 an ounce. Uh, the Canadian dollar has weakened versus the U.S. dollar. But still, silver nowhere near an all-time high versus the Canadian dollar. In fact, because the, the Canadian loonie was a weak currency... In 2016, look at that rise. Versus versus the Canadian dollar, silver got up to $27 an ounce, whereas in the U.S. it didn't crack 22. But still, silver versus the Canadian dollar, 20 less than $20 an ounce right now. Versus the Chinese RMB. Now the Chinese RMB has been. Um, They try to peg it to the dollar. For the most part, it's been pegged. It's been pretty much pegged to the dollar. They get excited if it goes over seven. But the point being here is that an ounce of silver today costs you about 100 RMB. Uh, in 2011, it cost you almost uh, 320. So nowhere near all-time highs. Same issue, 2016. You had that mini run-up there. You got as high as about 140 RMB, which is still less than half than the all-time high of 320 RMB. Okay, what other ones that we got here? Euro. Euro's weakened lately, but still, uh, you can get an ounce of silver for about 13.16 euro today. The peak euro price for silver was about $33. Chart looks very similar to the other developed Western nations. Peak in 2011, a little run up in 2016, and then flatlining after the drop in 2017 18. You see the spike in 2011, the dive, the false run up back to 30 in 2011, and then the stair step down, and then the final down in 2013. That's the euro. Now, the Indian rupee. Now, by all accounts, the Indian rupee is. Not really a strong currency, and you can see, even though it's not a strong currency, we're not even near, this only goes back five years, we're not even near the 2016 high, and it's still bouncing along the bottom. So, Japan, a very strong currency, I mean, it's ridiculous that it is, but look at that, Japan um, trading near all-time, not well, trading near decade lows. Uh, in the in Japanese yen, it's actually done worse this year. It's you could see the price in yen is lower than it was even at the end of last year, and then 2016. So the yen, very strong currency, harming the price of silver. You do not want to have held silver in Japan at any point in the past few decades, probably. Mexican pesos. Well, here we go. Mexican pesos still, again, they had the 2016 rise. Weak currency. 
but still, uh, it held up. Like we saw with Brazil and specifically Argentina, even though from 2016 to 2019, the price of silver dropped against major currencies, it actually rose against the Argentine peso and somewhat held its own versus the Brazilian real. Well, the Mexican peso outdid the did silver since 2016 as well. So weak currency, but silver weaker. Russian rubles, another weak currency, same issue. Peaked in 2016 and has fallen since. Weak ruble, weaker silver price versus ruble. So really only in Argentina would you have been better off holding silver. And again, you'd have been better holding chewing gum or anything in Argentina than the Argentine peso. But even against these weak currencies, silver has fallen. And what you're going to see tomorrow, that's not the case for gold. Many, many... Um, Currencies are at all-time lows versus gold or gold at all-time highs versus those currencies now versus a strong currency like the Swiss franc Now Swiss franc is strong and it should be even stronger, but they purposely try to weaken it by Just printing Swiss francs and the thing is they've been buying the US stock market and Nasdaq and unicorn stocks and they go up So they can't seem to debase their currency even if they try because they buy stuff that goes up and it adds the value, even though they sold a good portion of their gold. Um, but you can see here, uh, 2011, again, Swiss franc stronger than the dollar. was usually trading 1.12, 1.2, 1.3 to the dollar. So in 2011, the franc was much stronger than the dollar. So the silver price only got to about 42 francs. Well, right now it's trading at like 14.72. It's pretty much trading almost now one-to-one -one with the dollar and that's where the franc kind of is as well and that's why this chart is very similar to the u.s dollar chart it's almost identical there since about 2014-15 all right well that's it for silver in uh foreign currency so when people try to tell you oh, the silver's not doing bad it's just a strong dollar no wrong goes star it's silver is doing poorly there's no way to sugarcoat it it's just not done well the last 10 years and it's not because it's a strong dollar that's part of it but as i said other than argentina you've lost in every currency every major currency and every cheap minor currency all right let's move on now and let's take a look at what's going on in the um the warehouses the comex warehouse we like to look at this because it just shows how much silver is in the comex and why it's not going to default because these Warehouses are stockpiled with silver. This is Brinks. Remember, these are not all the ounces of silver that Brinks may hold on behalf of clients. These are the Comex approved bars, the 1,000 ounce bars, the 999 uh, fine silver bars that are eligible and or registered to trade on Comex to settle trades. So you can put your monster boxes and your silver eagles and whatever else you want to put into brinks and they'll store it for you but this won't count as the silver that they have in their comex approved warehouse so even though a monster box is perfectly legit silver you cannot use that silver 500 ounces box of silver to settle a trade they have to be in these comex approved style bars and so brinks has 48.731 million ounces of silver in their depository it's off that was up to about 55 million earlier in the year but this doesn't really mean anything other than investors have put their silver in there and it sits in there and it does show however that the amount of silver that's being stockpiled um is increasing because we're going to see in a minute after we look at the comex warehouses the silver etfs and all the other custodial arrangements for silver are on the rise there's about a billion and a half ounces of silver in all these warehouses not just the comex ones but the etfs and perth mint and any other place bullion vault gold money that acts as a custodian to store silver so silver is being hoarded um more in the last five ten years and i get part, part of that is it's cheap i mean why not it's been 15 16 dollars 17 dollars 13 14 dollars for the past five six years 
Most people don't see a downside into the single digits, so it's being hoarded and it's being stockpiled, and that's the Brinks Depository. Here's coins and things, C&T. You can see in 2016 when the price was uh, going higher, it looks like a lot of sales happened, and now the last couple of years, it looks like you know they're up to about 39, 35 million ounces of silver in that depository this one is in massachusetts coins and things this is just the eligible silver and then we got um hsbc which is more known for its gold and known for its uh, gold um what's the word gold etf gld and um but they also have silver just like jp morgan has silver but also has gold in its deposits. So, so what I'm saying is HSBC runs GLD, JP Morgan runs SLV, but both companies have warehouses with gold and silver. And HSBC, this is their silver position. Well, not their position, but they're... And they've got about 30 million ounces in there as well. And then you've got JP Morgan. Their warehouse got about 150 million ounces. I've been adding for the longest time there. A straight line up pretty much since 2012. So they've got 150 million ounces. And Scotia Makata, who's exiting this business, still has a warehouse that's open and it's got about 21 million ounces of silver. So there's a lot of silver in the Comex vaults here for sure. And here's the total amount. You roll that up and you're looking at 302 million ounces in the Comex vaults. I don't have the I might have the charts. I don't think I know. I don't have the charts tonight. But a lot of people always say there's a shortage of silver at the COMEX, which is complete nonsense. Well, there's so many owners per ounce. No, there's not. If you take the total amount of contracts outstanding and how much silver would be required to meet those contracts, it comes out to about four or five ounces to one. And we know that 95 to 99 percent of the contracts don't settle anyway they either roll over or they expire um there's far more than enough silver to handle any contracts that wish to be settled in physical silver here's another way of looking at it these are the brink scotia makata hsbc delaware jp morgan coins and things these are the depositories we looked at this is just placing them all on the line you can see jp morgan with the most brinks with the second amount and it looks like uh Coins and things is third. Uh, JP Morgan's the red line, Brinks the silver line, and uh, see coins and things. CNT is the light blue line, and the HSBC is the dark blue line. And another way of looking at it, one of Nick's charts, Comic Silver. This just shows eligible and registered. So all this nonsense about there is no silver and there's going to be a Comic default. Now you could see the Comex vaults are stacked with silver. That includes Brinks, Coins and Things, Delaware Depository, HSBC, JP Morgan, and Scotia Makata. Plenty of silver in the Comex warehouses. And increasing, it looks like. Let's look at silver ETFs, which is interesting, where they hold silver. Uh, ever since they introduced the ETFs, and the first one being SLV, that's the big green box at the bottom. In middle of 2006, really gone. Well, I wouldn't say it's gone straight up uh, from 2006 to 2011. 11 was probably on the peak. They had about 350 million ounces, but there's 350 million ounces also in 2016, and currently there's about 315 million ounces in the SLV. And then from there, you had other ETFs open. You could see Sprott there in the pink. They've got a decent chunk. They probably got about 50 million ounces of silver, maybe a little bit more. But overall, ETFs on balance have almost as much at all time peaks, a little under 600 million ounces, about 570 it looks like. Uh, they had been as high as about 620. But again, this is a lot of silver. This is, you know, we just saw 312 million ounces in the COMEX vaults. We're looking at about 600 million ounces here. People say there are no known stockpiles of silver. Like hell there aren't. These are huge stockpiles of silver. And this doesn't include all the silver that's in people's drawers. And uh, But then here's an even bigger way of looking at it. This rolls it up as much as you can. This is over a billion ounces. Um, 
This takes into account the COMEX and the ETFs. There's well over a billion ounces. This doesn't include Shanghai silver. doesn't include a lot of stockpiles. There's plenty of silver out there. All right. It's, it's unbelievable how they try to tell you sell you silver on the fact that it's scarce and it's running out. And, and for 10 years they tell you this. And you have to stop and take a look at the facts, take a look at the numbers and say, well, why has it? And if you just say manipulation, then I think you're... You're a moron if you think everything is manipulation because gold is manipulated too. Now, there is a point with silver. Yes, silver is smaller and you can manipulate it easier. But the counterflip to that is if, it, if you drive it down so cheaply and if it was so in demand, then people would buy it and there'd be a silver shortage. Well, there's not. You can manipulate, but if something is so valuable, you cannot make, you cannot drive the paper price down so low that it doesn't become attractive for people to scoop up the physical and that just hasn't happened they accept the fact that the price is low now let's take a look at our traders because that's exactly what we're talking about these are the people that define the price of silver some call it comex some call it crimex but here is a chart i like to revisit this is the price of silver at the top in the middle has the net commercial net non-commercial net non-reportable net uh, positions of the silver traders now the commercial traders historically have been for long periods of time net short meaning not every commercial trader is short but if you've got 25 50 of them whatever the number is on balance they're going to end up being short and the non-commercials tend to be long however that's simply a almost it has nothing to do with whether they're for or against silver. Just once you, if you're a long-term trader and you take a position, if you start at one point as a short, you generally keep that position, and when the price rises, you close out your shorts, and uh, then you go short again as the price rises because now you've got an opportunity. And it's the same thing with the longs. Price rises, they start to sell, and then it rises enough, they start to go short, and it flips back and forth. But what you can see here, I made these two red lines, very rudimentary lines, uh, in uh, 2017. You can see at the top, at the price of silver, a five, six month period, the price went, just went down. Now, if you look at the, the lines before then, yeah, the price was going down, but it was going up and it was going down. It was going up and it was going down. It never went down. It got went down sh more sharply at points than it did during that line I have showing in the, the up at the top with the um, price of silver. But the fact that it just kept going down was what created the historic, never happened before commercials went net long. Now, to read this chart, you've got to look at the blue. Those are the commercials. They are net short. You can see because they're below the line. And then never happened before. Commercials went long. And that meant silver set to skyrocket. I heard all that kind of moronic analysis. And of course it didn't. And the reason it didn't was that was nothing more than the shorts being short for so long that eventually they had to go long because there was no other way to go. So as the price kept going down, they finally weren't going to make money on their shorts, so they had to go long, and the same, the vice versa happened with the longs. They eventually went short. You can see that. That wasn't any big revelation, just the fact that they went long. You have to look at why they went long. It's because the price was going down for so long. We have a similar situation, historic, where the price has gone down since uh, in this year. has gone down most of the year. And you can see the same dynamic happening where the the longs are uh, the, the commercials are almost net long again. You could see they went from being very short with the blue and then they're almost right up back to the line again. But here's the historic part. I just want to show it to you, um, which, which is true. The blues are the, um, the commercials and they are historic. This goes back to 2001. They're below the line the whole time. The net group of them, they're always short. But you can see they go up at the very far end in 2018. You can see where the blue line actually crosses above and it's historic and it's net long and therefore silver set to skyrocket. Well, the reason you know that stupidity is go to 2011. The commercials were never net long there either. You could look at 2011. 
They're below the line. You do not need net commercial positions to be long for silver to rise. Silver, quote, skyrocketed in 2011, and the commercials were very net short. You can see, well below the line in 2011. So this nonsense we heard, but it's just silver pumper stuff, and they always talk about this. They make up stories and tell you about J.P. Morgan buying silver, and it's just nonsense because in retrospect if you go back and listen to all these interviews and all of these comics default and jp morgan stacking the shiny and the gold silver ratio is unsustainable and out of whack and therefore set to skyrocket never happened silver shortage some mine closed down and that's lights out it's game over now there's no more silver buy a house with 500 ounces of silver by 2015. You have to look at these numbers and charts. And if you do with a sober mind and not listening to fantasy and fairy tales, it's pretty obvious that it means absolutely nothing, some of the stuff that they tell you. Or it's just fantastical stories. China's going to stand for delivery, roll their gold out into a stadium. Anyway. All right. I think that's it for silver tonight. That's the story. Now, thing about silver it is down and has nothing to do with gold it's the only way i think that silver is going to go higher with re, if it has anything to do with gold is if gold goes higher because of monetary concerns then silver might start to move up otherwise silver is going to be reliant on its main driver for demand which is not insignificant which is um industry remember palladium went skyrocketing had nothing to do with monetary demands all this nonsense too silver is money silver is money who cares first of all it's not it used to be it's dormant money but calling something money doesn't make it more valuable palladium is not money and palladium went up like seven eight times uh silver went nowhere you can call it money all you want but that's not going to help it only time it helps it if it's an investment um demand like gold demand but again, silver doesn't have. Central banks are buying gold. No, because central banks don't buy gold. But what about Russia? I saw pictures of Russia. Another nonsense story. Every country holds strategic metals. They don't put them on their balance sheet on their central bank. There's a big difference there. All right. Well, let's see what you guys are saying about silver or anything else. Um, let me put up the... Um, I'm going to be on Silver Doctors, speaking of which, next week with Mike. I don't know what we're going to talk about, but uh, always good to talk to the people at Silver Doctors. And let's see if you guys have any comments. Remember, if you want your comment called out, put small gold, S-M-A-U-L-G-L-D. And I will try to get to your comments. And you know what? I'm not going to put the fundraising page up. I'm just going to show you a couple of beer steins. There you go. Small gold mug stackers. A lot of mug stackers don't have the beer steins and a lot of the beer mug Smuggle people don't have the smuggle mug. So I guess now is the time to stack. Go to smuggle.com and get yourself some ceramic. All right. Let's see what we got in the comments. Coins AZ. Hello. DB Stupid is here. Says this mug is half full. <laughs> Taylor Collins. Small gold intro was on point tonight. I don't remember what the intro was, but I hope it was on point. Um. This guy says, Coins AZ, Mug Stackers, Platinum to the Moon. DB Stupid says, it's not a big fan of Platinum. Taylor Collins says, it's Friday Lewis. No, it's not Friday Lewis. It is Saturday. DW says, yay, Silver Saturday. Looking forward to Gold Sunday. Tomorrow is Solid Gold Sunday with Small Gold. Tomorrow, we're going to do um, the same thing we did today. Uh, gold and foreign currencies. And it is a pretty amazing stark difference. When people... When they try to say silver is like gold, it is just cheaper gold. It is the poor man's gold. That is the, the money of slaves. At least these uh, silver is the money of the people. It, it's just cliches. It's just nonsense. There's no correlation at all. Gold's near all-time highs versus foreign currencies, and silver is puddling along. They're not, even, they're not even related. One's gold in color, the other is silver in color. There used to be connected when there was a bimetallic standard. You're going back 150 years. We haven't had that relationship is irrelevant today. All right. 
Let's see. Any good exchange for crypto? Sick of mine. I don't know. I don't uh, trade cryptos on different exchanges. All right. Harvey Birdman Stacker AG. What's up, Small Gold? Hello, Harvey Birdman Stacker. I haven't seen you before. Taylor Collins says Binance. All right. Stack as much as you can afford, says Mike. Wow. 4,500 ounces stack. What is that? 5, 10, 15, 20. Got like nine monster boxes. All right, let's see. Philip McCain. Oh, you want uh, silver versus Colombian peso? Well, I'll tell you what. While I got Mr. McCain here, I'm gonna pull up. I'm gonna pull up the um, silver price versus. Um, the Colombian peso. Let's see if I got that one. Yeah, there it is. I'm going to show you that one. I don't know what's going on with the Colombian peso, but uh, we will know soon enough if it's been a good deal to hold uh, Colombian pesos or silver the last 10 years. And I'm not going to tell you until I show you. I see it right now. I have the answer. Silver versus Colombian pesos the last... 10 years. Let's have a look. This is especially for Philip McCain. He has a special relationship to Colombia and he wants to see silver versus Colombian pesos. Por favor. Pues entonces aquí estamos. Here we go. Yes, and guess what? You're better off holding on to your pesos since 2011 if you are Colombiano. Yep. At the height, it was about uh, 86,000 pesos for silver. And today, 50 is 50,000. Less than 48,000. It's 48,696. So even against the, I would say, relatively... Weak currency of pesos colombianos that uh, you'd better off stacking pesos in your dresser draw since 2011 and even since 2017. Now, when people hear me say this, why are you hating on silver? Why don't you like silver? Uh, was something wrong? No, this, this is just factual. It, it's astounding to me how people have attached themselves to silver. Refuse to see... It's not done it gone anywhere for ten years, and yet they have asset adoration and they just go nuts for it and they they think you'll see, you'll see. I'm like, okay, you'll see. I'm not seeing anything. How many videos you're gonna watch where they're telling you silver is set to skyrocket, JP Morgan, some kind of pyramid, silver in yoga pants, I mean Comex default, silver shortage. How many years are you gonna listen to this nonsense? I don't know. You do what you want. All right, let's see how much is enough. <laughs> TCC, uh, small, it's game over for the Fed according to Market Watch. No, according to Peter Schiff, I saw he's a game over for the Fed. It's been game over for 10 years. Dibble, I, can I drink whiskey from a small gold mug? Absolutely. We even have shot glasses. Mike Hermie says, yep, thanks for letting us know. Silver's at a low price. Well, I mean, I try not just, I, I'm not just showing you prices. I've been explaining for years why the price is low. And people are insisting for years why it's set to skyrocket. And this is waiting for the great pumpkin over here, isn't it? I mean, how many times you can hear these stories, they actually come out and tell you it's going to happen. This is it. This is the year. So gold, silver ratio going to 16 to 1, 15 to 1, 1 to 1. Silver set to skyrocket. Rather be, you know... <laughs> I'd rather be 70 years early than a day late. I mean, you just keep hearing this stuff, but it's not going anywhere. Dibble, when will JPM let the price run? This has nothing to do with JP Morgan. That's another stupid story that they made up telling you JP Morgan is stacking silver. They bought silver. No, they didn't. There's no proof to any of that. 
It's it's complete nonsense. It keeps you stringing along once J.P. Morgan allows it. Yeah, that's all they got better to do is to suppress the price of silver. You know how much money they make during the year of nonsense that they could pay $40 billion in fines? That, that, that story, it's it's people want to believe it. They've been listening to that nonsense for 10 years. J.P. Morgan's going to make a fortune on its silver hoard. That's not even their silver. Unbelievable how people believe this stuff. When 1% of people want to invest, the silver price will rise. Mike, I did a long thing on that. I actually did I did 1% to 5%. Uh, and you're right. No, that, that's true. 1% to 5% of just American workers, not all Americans, just American workers, were to save. And I had these tiny numbers, just small amounts. Uh, it would eat up like 400 million ounces of silver. What I even, what I even batting an eye a year, which is like half the silver supply. And then you got India, and then if the rest of the world did it, yeah. But here's here's the news flash. It's not gonna happen. It's never happened. <laughs> it, people are into other things now. They're not into stacking silver. Wealth Watchman is here now. There is a guy who knows his silver, and you can learn a lot. You go back to the Wealth Watchman channel. You can watch all the silver videos. Excellent stuff. Much easier to carry gold. Well, that's true. The 1% have a lot of silver. It's the 99% that are too stupid to buy it. Dibble, that's not correct. The 1% are stuck in gold because when you've got millions and when you're millionaires and billionaires, when you've got that kind of money, you can't afford to stack that much silver because the gold-silver ratio is 90 to 1, which means it's going to take up 90 times more storage space. The rich got all the gold. The poor people are holding on to the silver. That's what Bernie says. All right. Yes, Wealth Watch make another good point. There weren't huge stockpiles in 2011, but there are now. Now, is that a, that's a good thing? Is that a good thing? Or does that mean, what is that? I don't even know what that means, but it's definitely a fact. One thing it means is there's no shortage at COMEX that's going to collapse the COMEX. I think much less than 1% have silver investments. Absolutely true. And probably less than 1% have gold, less than 1% have Bitcoin. All these assets, most people, these are alternative assets. Gold, silver, cryptocurrencies. Not many people have these assets. That's definitely true, Mike. And you're right. If people were to rush into these assets, then they would be driven higher. Personal opinion is there's less investable Bitcoin and Litecoin available than there is silver. And there's probably more hype and more interest institutionally and otherwise in those assets than there is in silver. That's another reason why you can't overcome the manipulation. All right, Philip, let's see. Anybody else got any more comments? Mike Hermes. Stock with one tenth of an ounce for every person on earth. No, you know, there's actually almost an ounce of gold for every person on earth. I did that. If you look up small gold uh, per capita gold by country, I have all the numbers there. Silver is even more. Soon Voltaire will offer physical silver. That's nice. Shark hair has been a bear all the time on silver. He says silver to 1250. Taylor Collins, Fed's about to lower rates. Yeah, probably. Uh, Mike Kearney's less than 1 billion ounces of silver. But the, the, where do you come up with that? There's so much silver around. There's not. There's more than 1 billion ounces. All right. Yeah, Mike, why is he so down on silver, LOL? I'm not. I know all the... I don't know all. I'm sorry. Let me take it back. I've listened to silver pumpers tell these tall tales for 10 years. And then I go and I do the research. And I, you have to ask yourself, are they really wrong for 10 years? Or are they just telling you a story? Do you really believe this J.P. Morgan story? I mean, do you really believe COMEX is going to default? Do you really believe there's a silver shortage? Do you really believe that there's so much silver demand for electronics? There's not. If you, All you have to do is go to the Silver Institute. 2010, demand for silver and electronics, 310 million ounces. 2018, demand for silver, 240 million ounces. How could that be? Electronics are smaller today than they were. There's more mobile devices. Well, I don't care what the reason is. You're not going to get a pop on electronics. But then you hear, silver is so useful in our lives. 
everyone is going to use electronics. There are more electronics made every year than there. Yeah, there's more electronics and they're using less silver. Same with solar. The solar was supposed to be, they're going to use so much silver and solar. No, they figure out how to use less and less silver in each solar panel. So, again, the demand doesn't rise there. Then if you look at the U.S. mint sales, don't get started on that. Peak in 2015, 47 million. This year, they sold 9 million so far. There's no demand for silver. That's not negative. That's not cutting on silver. Those are facts. So if you have limited, you have a decent supply and you have limited demand, declining industrial demand, what's only holding up the physical silver demand is India. They're buying, <laughs> they're the only country that even buys silverware. They buy silverware. Americans don't buy silverware. They used to 50, 80 years ago. There's no silversmiths in the United States, but Indians actually buy a decent chunk of silverware and silver jewelry. Without without that, I also, if you guys don't remember, I pointed out that Americans actually buy more investment silver than the Chinese. The Chinese have nothing to do with silver. They buy tons of gold, literally. They don't buy any silver. Silver is not a desired metal in uh, China the way it is elsewhere. Now, Indians far prefer gold, but they'll they'll take a little silver. They'll use it for gifts and so on. They like the jewelry. They like the they have a silver demand. They don't have that in China. Americans buy more investable silver than Chinese, not on a per capita basis, but on a volume basis. And you know, there's like a quarter of a number of Americans as there are Chinese. This is not negative on silver. This is just factual. Yeah, Philip is asking when are they going to when's the government going to resort to mug confiscation? <laughs> All right. So, okay. Okay. So, Mike, so what is money? Fiat currency? It does. I, first of all, I don't care about definitions, but I think you had a good point in a minute, Mike. Okay. Uh, I think Mike was asking, it's too many comments here, but I think he was saying be realistic about uh, the dollar. Well, I'll be realistic about the dollar. It, yes. You can listen to people pumping and telling you the dollar is toilet paper and it's worthless. The whole world runs on that worthless toilet paper. You can, you can believe what you want, that your stack is more valuable than dollars. If it loses value versus dollars and other currency, it means your purchasing power is lost. How is silver more valuable? The whole reason you want to own precious metals or anything is for it to appreciate so you have more purchasing power. And generally, purchasing power is that is exercised and conducted through commerce in which you trade dollars. Not when you walk around with the, your barter silver bag and try to buy something at the grocery store. I don't understand why people keep calling the dollar toilet paper when China runs on it. All the emerging markets run on it. The world runs on dollars. But you don't hear that from the silver pumpers. You just hear... Silver is rarer than gold. You hear a bunch of nonsense. If you really step back and look at why silver's been the worst investment over 10 years and then try to insist that it's the dollar that has the problem, you're not paying attention. All right. Oh, small gold. Do that. Why doesn't Comex raise the price of silver and make a huge profit? Comex doesn't make any. Comex is just a platform. They don't raise or lower the price. They change the rules sometimes and influence, but they don't make money when the price goes up or, or lose money when the price goes down. They're not trading on the platform. The fantasy is fiat money. Yeah, okay. I don't know what that means, but in my real life, I pay my mortgage in dollars in fiat. I buy food in fiat. The fake money or the money that's fantasy is that I'm going to walk into a grocery store with a bag of silver eagles and buy groceries. That's the fantasy. It's very hard. Once you've been once you've been pumped <laughs> to the silver story, you actually believe in this alternative universe where silver is real money, period. No, it's not. It's priced in dollars and its dollar price has gone down. Gold is more of a monetary metal. That's that's clearly true. If fiat it, Phillips, right? Fiat is a Ponzi. Uh, absolutely. But it's the Ponzi that the world is working in. Now, the argument for, the, the best argument for silver is 
not that it's going to skyrocket, that there's a good chance that there's either going to be a financial debt-based collapse or you're going to have an EMP and you are going to need some type of physical specie to conduct transactions with because your phone's not going to work, your Bitcoin's not going to work, your digital dollar's not going to work, your ATM's not going to work. But how much of a premium are you willing to pay for that? And that's your hedge against the disaster. Okay, that makes total sense. But what's your hedge against it not happening? Just stacking more silver? In other words, let's say for the next 5, 10, 15, 20 years, at worst, the lights go out somewhere. Or Argentina collapses and there's a debt crisis in Turkey. In Russia, whatever. But everything functions. Where's your hedge then? What if it what if there is no collapse? That means you've missed out on what some people call the real world gains that are happening in other asset classes. See, once you have this asset adoration where it's only silver, I'm stuck in the silver, because you listen to 27 different silver pumper channels and they convince you that that's the only asset that matters because they sell it or they have a newsletter that sells it, um, then you're you're going to miss out. You're just going to believe that uh, silver is the way. I'm not, I'm not trying to convince you. I'm not saying silver is bad. I'm saying it's not and hasn't been the way. The only people who have made money off of silver the last 10 years are those people who have been selling it. That's a fact. Yeah, coins AZ. Silver is not money since 99.99% of the population doesn't function like money. Okay, so Mike's question was, this is right. So what is money? Fiat currency? First of all, I don't care whether something's called money or currency. That's Mike Baloney talk. I, oh, this is not money, it's currency. And people need to know the difference. I don't know how that helps you know the difference. But one of the definitions of money includes a medium of exchange and an acceptable in many places. Well, silver is not a medium of exchange. Silver is not accepted in many places, not accepted in most places. So how is it even money? I call it dormant money. I had a debate with David Morgan. It's on uh, Kennedy Financial. And I introduced that term, dormant money. Yeah, okay, if the lights go out, financial crisis, yeah, for a while, silver will return as a medium of exchange. But don't think that they're not going to try to put the light, other than if they can't. Like somehow everything is so damaged. Then you got other issues. Um, but even if in a situation where the lights go out, they don't say, okay, well, that, that didn't work out. Let's just, let's just uh, churn our own butter. Let's forget uh, electricity. Let's forget refrigerators. Let's forget digital wire transfers. Let's just use silver and churn our own butter. And you know, those cars, nah, they were no good anyway. Let's go back to horse and buggy. It's unrealistic to think that way. Coins AZ, silver both an asset and a commodity. Yep, I agree with that. Silver equals not money. Ten years is nothing. Yeah, this is the other one. This is the Monty Python flesh wound. So you hold an asset for ten years, and every other asset for the last ten years goes higher. And somehow there's no such thing as opportunity cost. No, 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 no. I'm stacking. I'm stacking. I, I'd rather be 10 years early than a day late. I'd rather be 20. First of all, if you've been stacking for 10 years, you have enough silver. <laughs> there's, there's no way you need any more silver after 10 years. Not investment advice, but I, I don't know how much silver you're going to need. Mike Kearney, small guy, I think silver wills and will wins in currency for the last 10 years. No, it doesn't. All right. Silver, most people marry the country's currency. I don't know what that means. Phil McCain, North Korea is set to produce near-perfect small gold mugs. I think Trump is going to have to bomb them if that happens because small gold mugs are real wealth. You know, small gold mugs can't go to zero. People don't realize that. Oh, he's talking about... It, that's a dumb reason to buy anything because it can't go to zero. My mattress can't go to zero. I don't, I'm not going to invest in 100 mattresses. Um... <laughs> But here, these can't go to zero. Those are game-changing mug stacks. All right. What's your favorite fractional size? Oh, why are you talking about fractional sizes? 
Fractional silver is foolish. You want to get the silver dimes. Why? There's no premium on a silver dime. In fact, there's a discount often on silver dimes to spot. Fractional silver is extremely expensive. First of all, silver eagles are extremely expensive right now because you got the $2 plus premium on the new ones. So you're paying you know, 8 to 12% premium on your silver. When you go down to the small sizes, you're paying like 20 some odd dollars an ounce for one tenth ounces. If you want small sizes, Roosevelt silver dimes pre-1965. All right, let's see. Mike Herney, small gold. The dollar will do so well with 0% interest rate and QE money printing coming back soon. Yeah, it will. First of all, first of all, I'm going to give you another another hint here. All of your pumpers telling you the Fed can never raise rates. Remember all that? I said in 2015 they would. I said they would never normalize them, but they did raise them. And every time they raised them, they said, oh, they're going to cut them soon. They're just trying to get you excited that the dollar is going to collapse. The dollar is the last currency that will collapse. All the others will collapse first because they're based on the dollar. But they've convinced you that China's got it going on and the dollar is going to collapse and you just keep whatever. All right. But, Mike, you are steeped, I'm sure. Let's see. What else do we got here? Uh, we might be done. Silver bullets, they're cool. All right, Mike. Mike says thanks for the chat. Thanks for tuning in, Mike. I think we're done here. Um, I do want to thank everyone for joining me. Again, I'm not again. I like silver. I do not like silver pump. It's just like you can like cars and used cars. You just don't like used car salesmen. All right, everyone. Thank you very much for joining me. Remember, tomorrow night, and you may think tomorrow when I talk about gold that I'm in love with gold, but gold's done a lot better, and you're going to see that tomorrow night in spades. All right, guys. Have a good night. And uh, Bernie will give you the 10 second countdown if there's no more questions or comment. All right, Bernie. The, the one thing about Donald Trump is that guy's got to go. He's got to be. Bernie, I want the countdown. All right. Ready? Bernie can do the countdown without bashing Trump. Okay. Uh, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1 percent, 0. Have a good night. Thank you, Bernie. Have a good night, and have a good night, everybody. I'm going to wait for Phil to finish his countdown. He's got 10, 9, 8. Come on, Phil. I can't sign off until you finish counting down. Do it in Spanish. Diez, nueve, ocho, siete, seis, cinco, cuatro. Tres, dos, uno, we can do it in Italian, dieci, nove, otto, sette, uno, due, tre, Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, all right, good night.